An entitled Karen makes my life a living nightmare when she walks in with her party of eight into our restaurant and starts making crazy demands that I just simply couldn't keep up with. And after dealing with literally 10 other tables around me, as well as being short-staffed the entire night, I finally hit my breaking point. And now I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So I just woke up after the worst night I've ever had. I work at a dive restaurant or sports bar in a smaller town. And between high school sports and homecoming season and football season, we get our butts handed to us. Lately, we've been short-staffed with three servers when we should have about six at our disposal. We'll also only have one to two hosts when we need more specifically to handle to-goes and bussing the tables. So anyways, I get to work yesterday at 4 o'clock p.m. and the place is an absolute disaster. Only two servers were there for the morning shift and one manager who didn't start taking tables until one of the other servers physically refused to take any more. I mean, the restaurant is packed. I spent the first hour of my shift cleaning everybody else's tables while also pre-bussing and running food. The night shift only had me and two other servers, one being a double. Well, finally, I get my first table, and from there, the night goes south really quickly. One server is single-handedly taking on every single table in the front of the restaurant, while me and the other server split the entire back section of the restaurant. And guess what? We fill up again. I had so many tables at one point, I was literally running back and forth from the kitchen. All the while, we have nothing stocked up, we have nothing clean, silverware is being rolled after the host sits 10 tables without it, and I just feel like my whole back was in shock. But everything changes when they walk in. The most evil table in the entire world. It's an eight top. It's two couples with two kids each. And this one lady is staring me down before she even sits down in her seat. I'm in the middle of cashing out tables and taking orders, so it takes me about five minutes to get to them. I walked over to get their drink order, and this lady rolls her eyes and says to me, oh look, she's finally here. Now it takes me about two minutes to bring them because the bartender is so busy. So I had to pour my own beers and make the drinks. So I give them the beverages and I tell them that I will be back to take their order because once again, I must check on the other 10 tables and the other two servers are underwater at the moment. Well, about 10 minutes later, I come back to their table and I ask if they're ready to order or if they want an appetizer. Well, this entitled Karen cuts me off and yells, um, I haven't even ordered my appetizer yet, okay? And I just say to her, that's so crazy. Okay, what can I get you? Because at this point, I know I am making no money. These people are aware that every single table is full. And this woman has stared me down as I ran from table to table. As I'm trying to get the order, the other people at the table are telling her to be quiet. I ask them, can I get you guys any other appetizers? And this entitled Karen pipes up again and says to me, yes, that couple also would like something. And before she could continue, I just cut her off. I said to her, yeah, I'm going to get you guys another server. And immediately I turned around. And this is something I've never done in my entire serving career. I've always been complimented for being so nice. Tables tell me that I'm too happy to be a server. Usually, I let the rudeness just fall right off of me. But last night was a different story. With the lack of manager help and the lack of any supplies, begging the host to stop seating tables for even 10 minutes so that I can clean something, inevitably, my happy server facade had fallen apart. My patience has run so thin for these small town regulars, these football and cheerleader moms who make it their life mission to run a server into the ground just to be mean and never tip. The server splitting the back with me finally stops taking tables two hours before we close. I get more parties, more evil regulars, more people stopping me mid taking a table's order to ask me when they can order. And it's like, hello, you just got sat down. It was so bad. Our manager ended up dipping out at about seven o'clock and we close at 10 o'clock and I didn't get home until after 1230. By the time my last table cashed out, I sat out back and I cried my eyes out. I physically cannot handle the disrespect anymore, the lack of self-awareness tables have to their surroundings. The attitude and entitlement of these small town regulars have turned me into a different person. I feel so stressed out every single day. There's no more happiness left in my body. Everyone knows everyone, and every regular has the owner's phone number. So not only are we drowning, but now the owner is on the cameras. He's calling and yelling and micromanaging, all with what little things he can see on his stupid screen. Now, I'd like to say that I'm a pretty strong server. I usually handle a lot on my plate before needing to ask for help. 90% of the time, rude customers don't bother me because that's just how people are here. I learned really early on that this place is full of the worst kinds of people. And lately, I cry before and after my shifts, just dreading what will happen next. I'm taking the stress home with me and it makes me miserable. The coworker drama is at an all-time high and we're lucky to get through a shift without a fight. It is so frustrating, but I'm also scared to find another job. 
sob. I'm just going to lay in bed and cry until I have to be back tonight. And trust me, this post could have been twice as long with all the things that happened last night. Because trust me, I'm leaving out quite a bit of drama. Yeah, that sounds like an absolute nightmare and I'm so sorry that you have to deal with people like that. It is so awful when servers get treated this way. You're literally running all over the restaurant only to then be surrounded by entitled Karens who are so rude and demanding that it really would test anybody's patience. It's like at that point, you've got to know that this place is slammed and that there's like no servers around you and everything's a mess. So for them to be like, wow, we haven't even ordered yet. Hello, are you going to help us? Like that's crazy to me and there is just no good excuse for that. So hopefully you're able to find another job even though you're afraid to look for one because what you're experiencing absolutely sucks and you deserve so much better than what you're currently going through. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for accusing my mom of being selfish when she forces my twin sister's dad to include me in everything that my sister does because it couldn't be more apparent that they do not want me around, but still she is forcing me to do this because at this point, I feel so frustrated that I really don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, to start things out, yes, my twin sister and I don't have the same dad. My mom spent quality time with two guys close together and then she had us. And DNA even proved this as well. It's always been a weird thing and we get a lot of questions in real life. My sister's dad was willing to do the DNA test and when he took it, it showed that he was her dad but not mine. Mine had to be dragged to court and he has found ways around paying for me and he and his family never wanted to know me. So my sister grew up with a dad but I didn't. Now my mom didn't like it and when we were younger, maybe about five years old, I apparently used to get so sad when she would leave and go to her dad's house and I couldn't go with her. Now I don't remember it but I do get why it would be true. So mom told him that he had to include me and he was like nope, no way. It ended up in court with my mom wanting to take away his parenting time but the judge ended up saying that he didn't have to take me for his custody time but he had to include me in any big days out with my sister or for family holidays if she went along. He tried to get my mom to drop it but she refused. So ever since I was about 5 or 6 years old, he has been forced to include me in his life sometimes and the lives of his family members as well and none of them want me there. I know they see me as a huge burden and I absolutely hated it. If I wasn't being ignored, they were just really short with me and made it so obvious that they didn't want me there. My sister was torn between me and her dad and I told her that I didn't want to deny her a dad so she never let it come between them or us. When I was 13 years old I tried to put my foot down with my mom but she told me I had to go and she even said that she would take his butt to court so fast if he let me wander off and didn't make sure that I was okay like he would with my sister. There's only two years left of this as I am 16 years old but I can see how much my sister's paternal side despises having me around. It just sucks being forced somewhere that nobody wants you and my mom is still serious about taking him back to court. So I told my mom a couple of nights ago that it needs to stop and she can't keep doing this but she told me that I don't deserve to be left out because of her actions. Well, I told her that she can't make them love me and they have shown their disdain for me over 10 years now. I told her to just let it go and she got so mad that she wanted to yell and cuss at them. I told her to stop being selfish and stop forcing them to include me because she's the only one who wants that, not me. I told her I never wanted this and my mom eventually broke down and then she told me that it wasn't necessary to be cruel to her. So am I the jerk in this situation? What should I do? No, I don't think you're the jerk at all. Your mom is a massive piece of garbage for using you as some kind of pawn in her game. The only reason she has you going over there is literally to punish your sister's dad. That's all this is. She doesn't care about you being included. She just wants to stick this to your dad for some stupid reason. And so, of course, this entire mess falls on your shoulders. Like, does she really not apparently see how awful this is for you? I'm sure you come home probably looking and feeling really depressed and being like, wow, I really don't want to go back over there. And the fact that she's just ignoring that willingly and be like, no, you have to be there. I would hate for you to miss out on whatever your sister's going through. But it's like, what are you talking about? These people don't want me there and I definitely don't want to be there. What's there to miss out on? These people hate me. So seriously, I really hope this all gets better sooner than later because the way your mom's treating you is completely inappropriate and I don't blame you for trying to end this. This next story came from the Am I the Jerk subreddit. Check the links in the description if you would like to submit your own story. Am I the Jerk for breaking my small friendship with my college roommate after she yelled at me over some of the smallest, most pettiest things on planet Earth. Because right now, after all these years, I'm starting to question if I did something wrong. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. 
happened. Okay, so this happened back in 2023, and I'm still wondering every now and then if I was the jerk at all in this situation. In May of 2022, I graduated high school and started my first year of college in August of 2022. Sadly, my college is about two hours away from where I lived, so my mom had to always drive me back and forth every time I would visit home for the weekends and holidays that my college had. Now, I'm both an extrovert and an introvert, but I still don't like being away from my family since I love them so much. I eventually tried to get along with my first roommate at the time, and things were going fine until she started bullying me. She kept saying our room stunk and asked me what kind of shampoo and body wash I use, but I didn't tell her anything since that was private and a dumb question to be asking. Eventually, she and her friends would bully me behind my back when they didn't think I was listening. For example, one day I was watching some YouTube videos with my headphones on, and I was just minding my own business until I heard one of her friends rushing in and out of our room and shouted out loud that I smelled like an animal that had passed away. Well, my heart sunk, and I really started to wonder if I really was smelling that bad. But every Friday when my mom picked me up, she would always tell me that I smelled good and that my roommate was just being a jerk. Fast forward a month or so later, and I decided decided to change rooms. I was so sick of my roommate and her friends bullying me and giving me depression. However, I apparently had to email a certain amount of people on my dorm level floor that didn't have a roommate if I could become their new roommate, since I was the one leaving my room and not my old roommate. I emailed about three people and only one responded. And for this story, I'll call her Emma. Emma responded saying how glad she would be to have a roommate and told me I can move in whenever I was ready. Since I didn't want to waste more time with my old roommate, I packed all my stuff and I moved to my new roommate's room a few days after emailing her. When I first moved in, Emma and I were having a great time. We had a lot more things in common than me and my old roommate did, and she was just a lot easier to talk to. However, after getting to know each other more, she told me that she was disabled. I can't remember which condition she had, since it has been over a year since this incident, but I know that it was either ADHD or autism. I told her that I also have a disabled brother, and I didn't care that she was disabled, since that wouldn't change my mind about her as a person. The months go by and things between us go great, but eventually I started to notice that she never cleaned her side of the room. Whenever she gets breakfast, lunch, and dinner, she would leave all the unfinished food in the box and almost never throw them away into the trash can in our room or even in the hallway. The room eventually started to smell bad and I didn't know how to bring it up to her. I would just hope that she would clean it up eventually since no one likes the smell of food going bad. Well, I was apparently wrong. She would only rarely throw away her food boxes and the trash and I would have to wait for her to leave so I could clean them up myself. I know I could have told her, but I hate the thought of getting yelled at or making her feel bad. Later on, I started to also notice that she would have panic attacks almost every single week. Now, nothing is wrong with that. I can completely understand panic attacks since I've had a few myself and understand that people deal with stressful things all the time too. But whenever she would have a panic attack, she would just start screaming and screaming over and over again and make me feel so uncomfortable and unsafe. Now, to make this more clear, I hate it when people scream or yell. My dad was that kind of person who would yell a lot and scare me every time he got angry and started yelling at anyone. He mistreated my mom and then eventually mistreated me once they were divorced. At the age of 17, I stopped seeing my dad completely due to an incident that happened back in 2021. So even though I haven't seen my dad in over three years, I still have problems with people yelling at me or even just in general when it's in a negative way. Emma told me that she has to take medication to make her calm down, but I have never seen her take any pills or liquid medication or anything like that. I remember seeing her take one pill when she first told me about them, but never have I seen her take them again. So to me, it looks like she doesn't even want to take her own medication to stay calm. Every now and then, Emma and I would get into small arguments. For example, one day, I wanted to go on a walk since I wanted to lose some weight. She asked me if she could come as well, and I said sure, even though I wasn't fully comfortable with it. I was honestly just afraid if she and me would get into an argument since the day before we had one over her stupid charger not working and asking me what to do. A few minutes into the walk, she asked why I was being so quiet and honestly, I was scared to answer. So I just said that I wasn't in the mood to talk. Well, she immediately started yelling at me saying I was being a jerk for not talking to her and then she just walked back to our dorm. I was shaking so badly because she just screamed so loudly in my face and made me feel like I was a jerk like she said. When I asked my boyfriend and mom about if I was acting like a jerk, they said no and that Emma was just being a jerk for some dumb reason. And even though that made me feel better, I still felt bad deep down since I still worried if I did anything wrong. Months later go by 
why, and so do many other stupid arguments. Then, it was about two weeks left into our first year of college being over, and we were both excited. We decided a plan of going out for dinner at a restaurant that me and my family went to, since Emma wanted to try it out too, and it was on the last day of our exams being finished. And that would essentially be the second to last day for us at college. However, on the very last week of college, Emma's charger broke again. For some reason, she kept getting really bad iPhone chargers, and they all seemed to break a couple of weeks after buying them. Well, she screamed so loudly, and then asked me what to do. Now, at the time, I was wearing headphones, since I was finishing a project that I needed to get done, so I just ignored her. She then looked at me and said, um, hello, and that finally got my attention. I told her that I obviously have a Samsung charger, and I don't have an Apple charger, since none of my devices are from Apple, and that she should just go and ask some people that are living in the dorm hallway if you can borrow one. I also said that if you can't find any, then just wait until tomorrow and buy one. And even though I gave her an actually good answer to her question, what I said somehow pissed her off still. She told me that I was being a terrible friend, saying that I was being a jerk, and that I don't give a crap about her phone problem. Now hearing her say these things to me again just made my blood boil. I was just so done with it. I told her again that I don't know what to do, since I don't own any Apple chargers, and I told her she can either wait for tomorrow to buy another one at the school store, or just ask someone in our dorms to use theirs for a bit. But once I said that, she stormed off and slammed the door. And when she did that, I started crying my eyes out, and I texted my college resident assistant that I needed to talk to her about my roommate. Well, a few minutes later, I get a knock on my door, and it is the resident assistant. And it's then that I told her everything that happened as I cry my eyes out. And once I was done, she said she was so sorry for me, and asked if I wanted to come downstairs to the office and talk to someone who might be able to make me and my roommate change rooms. And you know what? I said yes. But before I could even leave, my roommate came upstairs with some food and told me that she was sorry for yelling at me over the charger thing. And then she said that she's just stressed out with her exams. But you know what? I didn't care. She has done this multiple times and only half the time would she even apologize. And usually these apologies would just be half-baked. I didn't care that she had ADHD or autism. She still can't hurt me like this and give me apologies that aren't good enough while also not changing at all as a person. I left with my RA and I talked with some other people who were also in charge of the dorm stuff. And maybe about one or two hours later, they all asked me if I was sure that I wanted to switch rooms again. And I said yes, absolutely. Before I could change rooms though, me and two other people had to go upstairs and back to my room to tell Emma what was going on and that I'm leaving the room since I feel unsafe and uncomfortable with her yelling, screaming, and rude behavior. Well, once I walked in, Emma knew something was wrong. One of the people with me told her that I was leaving due to not feeling safe and that I was uncomfortable with how she's been treating me. And she seriously looks at me confused and mad and tells the two people that she thinks I'm not respecting her at all with her disability, saying that I don't seem to care that she has a hard time staying calm and controlling her panic attacks. I then tell her that she actually promised me when I first moved in that she will leave whenever she starts getting mad at stuff and when she just can't control her emotions that to me, I'm the one not being respected by her because she made a promise and never kept it. And what's even funny to me is that she always buys stuff to calm her down, but she never uses them once she gets them. It's like she gets bored with whatever she buys immediately and just lets herself be angry and out of control and doesn't seem to give a crap about how I'm feeling. Once I told her this, she almost yelled at me in front of the two other people who came with me and then just asked for some time to cool off. One of the helpers said sure and told the other helper to help me take my stuff to a room that's on the other side of the building. Once I got settled in, I finally started to relax. On the last day of college, my roommate packed up all of her stuff and then texted me once she was out of the room and going home. But once I got that text, I blocked her and haven't unblocked her ever since. Now, my family, my friends, and my boyfriend to this day all still say that I did nothing wrong and that she was the one with the problem. But I still sometimes worry if I did anything wrong or if I caused all of this to happen. I also found out the day I was wanting to change rooms again that Emma had an old roommate during the start of the year that moved into a different dorm room because she would never clean up her side of the room and would always scream about all kinds of stuff. So that made me feel a bit better at the time, but I still don't know if I did anything wrong here. So am I the jerk for the way I ended our friendship? What should I do? No, you are definitely not the jerk. You didn't do anything wrong. This roommate was absolutely insane. Both the first one and the final one that you had to deal with. Like seriously, both of them are out of their minds. The first one literally treated you like garbage and was lying to you the entire time. Like I'm sure you didn't smell bad at all. You probably 
probably were very clean and you literally just minded your own business. So for her to say that you smell like an animal that passed away is like so inappropriate. So to that extent, I don't blame you for moving out of there. But this second roommate by the name of Emma absolutely takes the cake. She's the kind of person who would be like, wow, you're not respecting my disability while also doing nothing to manage her disability. Look, if she really did have panic attacks and like debilitating ADHD and she was having trouble dealing with her autism or whatever's going on, then that is her responsibility to take care of. It shouldn't fall on your shoulders all because she's not taking her medication. Like this literally is an Emma problem and not a you problem. So the fact that she yelled at you is completely inappropriate. Like there is never a universe where that is okay. So from her living in absolute filth all the way to her outburst where she's screaming at you and even her trying to be like, wow, you're insensitive to my disabilities. Like all of that makes her incredibly entitled and an awful person because anybody who weaponizes their disability or mental health in this kind of way and tries to turn it against you all because they're not getting what they want, in my opinion, is a horrible person. So on that end, you are definitely not the jerk here because it really seems like you're the one that tried to do everything right. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.